Thank you very much, uh, Pia. Uh, and uh, from my side, uh, wholeheartedly welcome to this event. As uh, safety is uh, my single most important task uh, as a CEO of Yara, we have two emergency gates, one at the back on the left side to you, and one here in the back and the uh, right side. So if something should appear, a siren, please uh, leave the room, don't bring anything with you, walk out of the safety or emergency gates, and uh, you will then be out into the, uh, the free. Um, <coughs> uh, I, uh, <coughs> when this was um, launched, uh, I was very excited about uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, a local uh, country organization, or uh, us, uh, brought up this issue. Because as uh, uh, Tero said, uh, this is something which is uh, not uh, pressing today here in Finland. Uh, we hear about it, but we don't uh, see it on a day-to-day -day basis. And this goes for not only Finland, but uh, most of Europe and uh, uh, the whole Scandinavian uh, area. It's important that we start to talk about this, because these are subjects which need to be dealt with in many years to come. And uh, that's why I'm very pleased that uh, the local organization take an initiative like this. And when this come up and said, yes, I will be there. And I'd like to give you my support and also my view into it. Because uh, it's important that uh, we have local uh, solutions also then supporting the global challenges. And which I'll come back to, we have a uh, particular issue here in the Baltic Sea where uh, we and uh, the uh, local organizations together with the uh, uh, important players in the society uh, are working on a subject which we can actually see out of our uh, uh, front door almost. <coughs> I don't think uh, I need to say too much about uh, who we are. We are uh, the uh, largest uh, fertilizer company in the world, uh, delivering about 30 million tons of fertilizer. That's about, uh, if you look at the bags here, it's about 200 million bags around the world on a yearly basis. And uh, we are in 51 countries with our own people. And we are selling to more than 150 countries around the world, which means that we are extremely global. And uh, the um, importance, uh, both from the uh, development or the uh, initiation of the company, it was done uh, based on uh, innovations and some businessmen having a good uh, idea how to take this innovation into practice. And also then I'm very proud also participating in fighting famine uh, of uh, the 100 years. And if it hadn't been for the uh, um, fertilizer that uh, we are producing, uh, half of the population in the world would uh, actually have starved to, starved to death uh, uh, as it is uh, today. So. Being then a global leader, it's also then a responsibility that we do have to uh, work on the challenges that we do have in front of us. There are more people to be fed in the years to come. Uh, Tero said that uh, in um, 2050, we have to produce uh, uh, um, more food than what we have done in the last uh, 10,000 years said a bit differently, we have to produce 70% more food than what uh, we uh, do uh, today. Um, the uh, population is growing, but it's not only that the population is growing, it's also then a shift in diets. Uh, in uh, Asia, the uh, middle class is getting richer and richer, not only Asia, but their particular, and then people start to eat uh, slightly different things than rice three times a day. Which means that there is a need for more food in uh, the, uh, the years to come. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, to grow food you need uh, some sort of soil, uh, water, seed and fertilizer. That's why we are playing such an important role in the picture of 
making sure that uh, the world get the right amount of food and the right quality of food also then in the years to come. And as the biggest fertilizer company in the world, we feel responsibility for making sure that we are participating in it. Not only feeling responsibility for it, we also do believe that this is good business for our shareholders, that we can make good business cases on the activities that we do, which is taking care of the future. We um, also have to do this in a sustainable way. And uh, uh, we know that there are limited resources uh, out in the world. There are a limited number of acres to be plowed. And uh, there are also then limited uh, amount of water. Um, the, um, about 70% <coughs> of the fresh water out there in the world uh, is used for... Uh, uh, agri for, for producing uh, um, agricultural products. And obviously, making sure that the water is used in an as optimum way as possible for the nature is an important task. And there we can see huge possibilities to improve on that, making uh, the uh, production of food also then from a water point of view in a sustainable way. If you look upon the um, growth of uh, the population, uh, I don't think that there is anybody who is actually questioning this. This uh, with By 2050, we will be uh, around 9 billion people, um, unless something uh, extreme should happen in the world, and God forbid. We, um, that's almost then given. Also, what is given is that the arable land in... Uh, square meter per person, which is also then important, is then going down quite dramatically. Which means that uh, the arable land that we do have left, and there are not that much arable land left, it is in uh, Latin America, Africa, and some in East Europe. The rest is almost then utilized to the extent that we have reached a plateau. Um, and um, to be able then to uh, uh, feed people on less arable land, one has to do this in a more uh, efficient way. And uh, FAO, they are, um, by 2050, uh, we need 9% of uh, expansion of the arable land. Um, and we uh, need 14% increase in cropping intensity and 77% increase in yield, which means the uh, agricultural activity has to be done in a much more efficient way than we, what we do today. We also know that we can reduce the waste, which is also something that one has to be working on, because 70% more production is almost impossible. So we have to, to be able then to feed this, also do things to reduce the waste in food production. But there is a need to produce the food in a more efficient way than what we do today. Talking then about uh, water, uh, which is a very limiting factor, and we know that it become more and more uh, limited. It's interesting to see here that uh, Western Europe is an uh, importer of food today. And importing food also means that we are actually importing water from the producing units. And uh, we are convinced that uh, the politicians was also will have to be faced with this and also then the, uh, the policy uh, and subsidy structures has to be also changed also in Europe, making sure that the farmers use their land in a uh, sustainable and efficient food production way and not only getting subsidies on the base that they have land. Because we also then in Europe need to produce in a more efficient way, utilize the land in a more efficient way, so we are not depending on this actually import of water from other places around the world. Global warming, we know that uh, global warming is, uh, uh, I think everybody is uh, now in agreement that uh, we have uh, uh, 
actually developed the the basis for uh, global warming. We are the cause of the, the challenging situations that we are in due to our industrial development. Um, I don't think anybody is in disagreement for that. Uh, what uh, the global warming, uh, the main effect of it is also then related to agriculture, because that's where you see that uh, uh, when it is getting warmer, you will have more extreme effects, and the more extreme effects will have an effect of producing food. And we saw in 2008, the, when the price hiked in the f uh, agricultural products, that there was a lot of unrest around the world. We also have to make sure that uh, all, the, all the politicians have to make sure that they are actually getting enough food to the population, making sure that they have enough to eat so they are, uh, you could say, operate or being in a quiet uh, environment. Um, we um, have to also accept the fact that the global warming is challenging uh, the agriculture activity and we also then have to deal with that preparing ourselves that we will have effects on uh, heavy rains and storms that we saw last year in uh, the US, the year before in uh, Eastern Europe, that will have also effects on, on prices. We have to be prepared for that. We talked about the uh, environment and uh, we uh, uh, also have to accept the fact that uh, uh, producing uh, the way that we are doing, uh, not only agriculture, but the, uh, the, how, the how the industry is then run, is also then having an effect on our environment. And uh, uh, we see here uh, the, uh, the Baltic Sea, which is uh, affected uh, very heavily by uh, industrial waste, uh, animal waste, uh, based from uh, uh, the, uh, the the population, but also then runoff from the agricultural activity around the um, uh, Baltic Sea, and uh, this is uh, uh, where one uh, also have to understand what sort of activities can you be involved in to save an area here, obviously to clean up uh, the uh, the industrial waste but also then making sure that one is involved in activities which is uh, reducing the effects of runoff also from uh, the agricultural activity. It's also then into the future very important that uh, we are uh, understanding uh, that uh, the um, modern agriculture is uh, nothing which is then actually against the uh, climate and the environmental challenges. We have to see that this is something that we are combining, making sure that the agricultural, uh, or the modern agriculture, are actually then supporting the, the climate and the environment. And that's where we believe that we can participate in this uh, and helping also then this being done in a more optimized way and what we where we can participate in making sure that we are um, grow more on existing arable lands, reduce negative environmental impact, meet rising food demand, meaning uh, preparing the best farming practices and the best uh, solutions for the farmer. Through then knowledge and sustainable uh, intensif intensification, uh, through innovation that uh, we are uh, doing in our industrial plant, but also then on our products that we are developing, uh, helping then growing the agricultural products with using less water and making sure that they're grown in the most efficient way, and also then using uh, technologies which are reducing the effect of runoff and making sure that you are delivering the necessary uh, fertilizer on the land which the land needs. There's another element which is also then extremely important uh, in this uh, context and that is um, uh, we need the, the right products, we need the, also the right understanding and the attitude of the uh, companies involved, but we also need partnerships. 
we uh, see that uh, uh, without being able to get a uh, public-private partnership going, we will not be able then to achieve what we need to achieve, uh, meaning uh, produce more food in a sustainable way. I am very uh, um, pleased being part of the World Economic Forum and the Grow Africa activities where we uh, have uh, uh, a lot of partnerships going on, making sure that uh, some of the African countries mm, where there are almost 85% of their business activities are actually agriculture activity, where the farmers themselves are the poor farmers which are not able then to get enough food to themselves or their families. We have to transform this into business opportunities for them. But obviously to do that, you have to have roads, you have to have uh, partners which are taking off the products, you have to have the um, uh, governments setting up the right uh, uh, regulator regulations for being able then to sell it, and you need to have financing, and all these things has to be done in a partnership. And uh, I was then in um, Washington uh, last year when uh, President Obama launched the G8 initiative for uh, uh, food production. And uh, uh, there he committed the G8 states with the 3 billion uh, US dollars. We are involved in committing from the industry uh, the same amount and the African countries have committed themselves to, to support the activities that uh, uh, Obama uh, G8 and we as the industry has uh, committed ourselves to participate in. And this is how one can also make the necessary changes uh, to uh, have uh, partnerships like this and in this context also then you see here it's an uh, uh, it's uh, not a Finnish tractor but it is an uh, a John Deere uh, but uh, uh, spreading then uh, gypsum on the field uh, in Finland and uh, this is um, where we also then are uh, showing then a public-private partnership which started then in by uh, um, Chemira quite some years back. We took it over and in 2010 we started the initiative on uh, reducing the phosphate runoff into the Baltic Sea. And here also the society, the governments and the farmers and uh, ourselves made partnership, making sure that this uh, uh, were uh, brought to a success. And uh, uh, um, you might know that um, in uh, this year we are starting a new partnership, uh, reducing the runoff from nitrogen into the Baltic Sea. Participating then in improving uh, the uh, environment in the Baltic Sea and we cannot do that alone uh, and the industry as such cannot do it alone. We have to have the public uh, opinion and the politicians participating in it because otherwise we will not be able to achieve what we need to achieve. And here also then the politicians has to put up new rules and regulations in the years to come, making sure that we are on the right direction. And I do have uh, good hopes that uh, we will be able then to achieve what we need to achieve to be able to feed the population, because that we need to do, because otherwise there will be unrest and the world will be at a disaster. And I, I, am, I do have good hopes uh, and uh, um, I, uh, we as a company are committing to participate on this and as I said related to the Baltic Sea uh, we have participated, are participating through uh, a lot of farms around the Baltic Sea not only then in Finland but also around the Baltic Sea related to phosphor. This time we also then uh, are uh, starting uh, committing ourselves to reduce end leakage. And this is not only Baltic Sea but it is used an example which is um, closer to us here. But um, conveying best farmer practice, providing our sensor technology, sharing knowledge to cross 
national networks, going into partnerships. Um, we are sure that we can uh, maintain a competitive agricultural sector in the region. Because we are not solving this by closing down the plants uh, around the Baltic Sea or in Finland or other uh, places around the world. We have to run the farms, but we have to run the farms in a more environmental and efficient uh, way, in a uh, sustainable way for uh, the, uh, the, the, the world that we are living into and the planet that we are living in. And um, we like to participate in that. We are not only like to, we, are, we feel obliged to do that because of the, such an important element in this uh, war uh, and uh, a fertilizer is. And we like to be understanding what is coming towards us and also making the necessary taking the necessary actions to it, so we are proactively then helping the world become an, a place which is uh, more sustainable uh, in the years to come. And as I said, I'm very pleased that uh, you here in Finland and uh, taking then the initiative through our local organization to really bring this uh, on the agenda. And uh, I'm looking forward then to listen to the rest of the uh, uh, presentations. So thank you very much for uh, your attention.